Number one rule of Wall Street. Nobody, I don't care if you're Warren Buffett or if you're Jimmy Buffett, nobody knows if the stock is gonna go up, down, sideways, or anything. Tremendous crowds which you see gathered outside the stock exchange are due to the greatest crash in the history of the New York Stock Exchange in market prices. profiteering. They had begun to consider the government of the United States as a mere appendage to their own affairs. And we know now that government by organized money is just as dangerous as government by organized mob. What you are currently witnessing in the world today has been seen before. Yet every time these cycles reappear, it's almost as if it's never been seen before. This very thing has been repeated countless times throughout human history. Greed is right. Greed works. Yet, society continues to be baffled by the greatest opportunity a generation may ever see. The recession and its many associated definitions such as economic cycle, slump, trough, decline, downturn, depression, you name it. Throughout world history, we have continuously dealt with these very situations, yet we haven't figured out a way to prevent a recession. The recession. The next recession. But they sure figured out a way to capitalize from it. The they I'm referring to are the haves, not the have-nots. The Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, the Buffets of the world. The billionaires and Uber wealthy have unlocked the code to making massive amounts of money in the hundreds of billions from these cycles. No different than the early 1900s with American titans like Andrew Carnegie, John D. Rockefeller, to Henry Ford. Once upon a time, I once believed that recessions just happened, but I'm not so sure about that anymore. And by the end of this video, you will know exactly why. Yes, the money changers have fled from their high seats in the temple of our civilization. There must be a strict supervision of all banking and credit and investment. There must be an end to speculation with other people's money. Good evening. Today is Black Monday, the day the Dow dropped more than 500 points. The day the Dow dropped more than 22 percent, almost double the rate of the Black Monday that signaled the beginning of the crash of 1929. The way we bank, the vehicles we drive, even the computers that we use, will always change. But one thing is clear, inflation, it'll come throughout history. Um, a failure to make payments uh, that are due, whether it's to bondholders or to Social Security recipients or to our military, would um, undoubtedly cause a recession in the U.S. economy and could cause a global financial crisis. Others thought it meant very little, either for the economic or the outlook for the Fed. The spread between the two and the 10-year, it turns negative sometimes before a recession. What we've seen is three of the four longest business cycles in U.S. recorded history have been quite recent. So we're seeing that, and um, I I if you look at, today's, look at today's economy, there's nothing that's really booming that would, that would want to bust, in other words. It's a pretty sustainable picture. When in doubt, zoom out. And the fiscal came in to support the economy. You had excess liquidity in the summertime of 09, just like you're having it today, except today is even way uh, bigger than that level. So the amount of money that's floating around the system at just the time that the global economy is beginning to pivot off of historic weaknesses. A financial crisis of the past is often associated with a panic or a bank run. That's a time which investors sell off assets or withdraw money from savings accounts because they fear that the value of the assets will drop in steep decline if they remain in a financial institution such as a bank. Businesses and consumers are unable to pay their debts, and financial institutions like banks experience liquidity shortages. It's almost as if the money dried up slowly like a river on its last you're, stage. You're thinking of this place all wrong, as if I had the money back in a safe. I, the, the money's not here. The symptoms of a recession were there all along. You just failed to diagnose them. An economic bubble was accumulating fast, 
which is a fast increase in value followed by a quick decrease of value. These asset bubbles are no different than an expansion or a contraction. When bubbles accumulate, they become too big and lead to a stock market collapse such as a 1929 stock market crash or a sovereign debt crisis like countries that have defaulted on paying its debt like Argentina, Lebanon, and Ukraine in recent years. The causes of a default can range from a high debt burden and economic stagnation to politically inclined situation. That leaves last but not least, a currency crisis, which involves a sudden and steep decline in the value of a nation's currency or money, causing negative ripple effects throughout the economy. So one unit of a certain currency no longer buys as much as it used to in another currency. In other words, a currency crisis is often the symptom and not the disease of greater economic malaise such as when George Soros broke the Bank of England on what was known as Black Wednesday. You took the whole quantum fund and bet one and a half times that. That's really called betting the ranch. Well, no, it, it actually, in, in terms of the risks we take, uh, it, it wasn't. It wasn't even a full exposure. Uh, because the risk of loss was maybe uh, two, two and a half percent. Uh, so if one and a half to, uh, times two and a half percent would be, let's say, four percent loss, it wouldn't have killed us. So this is where this, this equilibrium uh, uh, reached a climax. Some of the greatest Wall Street speculators have profited during times of recession such as Jacob Little, who was known as the Great Bear of Wall Street in 1835, Jim Channels in 2001, or famous investor Michael Burry, who profited from the subprime mortgage crisis in America, which occurred between 2007 and 2010, making over $100 million by shorting the market after persuading Goldman Sachs and other investment firms to sell him credit default swaps against subprime deals he thought to be vulnerable. To read numbers. How big's your short position right now? Uh, 1.3 billion. And the premiums? Well, we pay uh, roughly 80 to 90 million <laughs> each year, which is high, but I was the first to do this trade. Watch, it will pay. I, I may have been early, but I'm not wrong. No matter what the market is, a great investor knows how to give a prognosis and forecast the future to an extent. And don't worry about the days. What days? That phase. I'm sorry. I said don't worry about it. I'll get one of my kids to fix it. How did you know? Oh, what's really going to bake your noodle later on is would you still have broken it if I hadn't said anything? This isn't to say you can predict the stock market, but you at the very least should be able to make a high probability thesis to determine the future. Many investors throughout history have taken advantage of the stock market during recessions and bear markets. This is the first process before you can capitalize on a bull market. You can't just wait on winter to pass you have to learn to embrace winter to enjoy spring and summer of the cycle. The very definition of a cycle is a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. For example, a reoccurring series of operations occurs in the car with the four cycles of intake, combustion, ignition, and exhaust. In biology, it's a similar thing with a reoccurring series or chain of events in the lifetime of a plant or animal. Wealth inequality has always existed in America. During the 1800s to modern day times, most of the wealth has been built 
during economic cycles. Economic cycles don't come without loss, such as the latest economic cycle we are in in 2023 with Alphabet announcing job cuts of 12,000, Meta 11,000, Amazon 10,000, Microsoft 10,000, Salesforce 8,000, Amazon 8,000. The majority of the job cuts are in tech because tech is over bloated and it grew too quickly. One of the leading indicators of an economic cycle or recession is the yield curve. That just means that the present day time has a better outlook than the future. So each gray bar represents a recession. From 88 to the current time of 2023, each gray line represents a recession. The shortest one we've seen, all the way to the right, was 2020, and that was a short-lived one in the 20-day range, and the longest one was 2008 with the mortgage housing crisis. So each time the yield curve inverts, where you see the red, it's a recession. And the current one, it doesn't look too good. Only time will tell if the latest inversion will lead to a recession. But currently we're in the negative, we're in the red. There is a lot of mixed data right now, such as whole food prices ending in 2022, just below where they started. So what that means is that the price whole foods started at in 2022 is currently at that range in 2023. So you see a lot of mixed information that could lead to a recession, maybe inflation's getting down, or we might have both a recession with low inflation. It's very possible that that could still happen because of the Fed rates raising and the hikes culminating into a recession. S&P 500 relies more on oil and gas for earnings. So energy kicks in more earnings relative to its weight than any other sectors. What that means is that energy at 10.1% of the S&P 500 earnings, its market value is 5.3. So that goes to show you that it's almost double what the market value is. So the 5.3 and the 10.1, that just shows that energy right now is doing very well. Anytime you're dealing with economic cycles, you have to be able to be fluid and move along with each cycle. That means that one year it might be tech, the other year it's healthcare or financials or communications. You just have to be able to be fluid and changing with the information that you receive. And currently right now, energy is doing the best. No one can tell the future, but you should be able to look at the past and have a parameter for the future. If you look at this chart here, this is the federal interest rates going back to 1960 all the way to 2020 and the current time period where we're at 2023. Each gray bar represents a recession and the blue line represents the federal interest rates. If you look in the middle, you see 1980 was the highest. That was when federal chairman Paul Volcker was in charge. He raised the federal interest rates all the way up to 20% to kill inflation. In doing so, he caused a recession. And it led to inflation going down and everything recovering. So you've seen a rise up with the blue line, federal rates, and then you've seen down. So throughout history, if you look closely, you're seeing up and down movement. That's a recession. That's an economic cycle. So you're seeing inflation and prices of goods and services go up. And you're seeing the rates hike up in order to kill inflation. And then you see a steady decline down. That steady descent down, that just means that things are going back into bull territory, which means that the economy is back on track. Currently, if you look all the way to the right where it says 2020, that's where we're at right now. And if history is any indicator of the future, you're going to see a possible recession and then you're going to see a steady decline in the Fed rate leading to a bull run. So that's where history comes into play 
And that's how you use it when it comes to data and information. You use the past to present the future. Anytime you see low federal interest rates, you're going to see more borrowing. That just makes sense. It's common sense that if low interest rates, you're going to see more borrowing. Now, if you look there on the left side, you see a strong increase up just below 5.5% with the federal interest rates. And then you see in 2008, you see the housing crisis that led to a recession and that lasted several years. That's why you see a larger gray bar compared to the right one with the COVID-19. And then from 2010 all the way to 2015, you seen 0% Fed rate. And that was a time period. That's why you seen a bull run and you seen a lot of the economy and GDP growth and stock market growth. And then you seen a steady incline with the rates going back up when Janet Yellen was in office. And then you see a descent down. And that was because of COVID-19. So the current time period that we're in right now, you see a Fed rate hike that's just below 4.5, but you haven't seen a strong descent down yet because we're still in the phase, we're still in the phase of climbing right now. So we haven't seen a descent down. You won't see the bull market return and the stock market continue its rise until you see the Fed rates go down. So we're going to zoom out again and look at it once again from 1960 all the way to 2020 and the current time period we're in right now 2022 2023 strong ascents up strong descent down all throughout the last 60 plus years so it's similar to a roller coaster strong ascent up and strong descent down with the fed rate recessions all throughout there I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven recessions over the last 60 years. I'm sure it's more sprinkled in there, but the biggest ones being 2008 and 1980. And every time inflation happened, they raised the Fed rates, cut it down, recession, bull run resumes. So the areas where you will see the most growth are the flat areas such as 2010 and 2020 and that is why you've seen a 10 year plus bull run because it was flat from 2010 to 2020 you've seen a flat rate of the fed rate what we've seen is a massive repositioning of a crowded trade so last week was technical but more generally i would encourage you every day to look at the yield curve not the level of yields but the yield curve and that is starting to signal more concern about a policy mistake, which is the Fed not going fast enough in the beginning and then having to overdo it later on. So that's why you're seeing these curves flatten with the two tens now down to 76 basis points. It's pretty complicated that they're not going to move quickly enough, but then they'll have to do a whole lot to catch up and that's going to hurt the economy pretty extremely. Yes, and that's the worry, okay? And that inflation has become, as I've said to you in the last few weeks, the major threat to the markets. That the Fed simply has underestimated um, the inflation threat. It has stuck to the transitory call for too long. And now it is exiting that call, but is doing it late. And it's doing this in the face of two other developments, which is a new COVID variant and what's happening in China. So that's why the market is starting to sense this, this notion that we are going to have a policy mistake that will add in the short term to the stagflationary winds and in the long term may well cause the risk of a recession. Everything that we're currently going through right now has happened before. Once again, history leaves clues. And currently in the moment we're in right now, you have to go back into the past in order to find the future. Panic selling. Panic, complete panic. Everyone's going crazy. For brokers and traders, it was an unmitigated disaster. Bloodbath. The sudden collapse brought back memories of a fateful October day 58 years ago. Using the past as an indicator forward, if you look at 1995 all the way to 2000, you've seen an asset bubble form before you've seen it all tumble down. And then in 2003, 
that's when you started seeing a significant increase back up to where we're at currently in the moment. Anytime a recession is involved, there will be printing of money. There will be stock market madness, devalue of the dollar, and a market collapse. Fear and panic amongst the public, that's a natural, that's a given. They say history likes to repeat. I say it rhymes. Paul Volcker, Ellen Greenspan, Bernard Bernanke. Those are the faces of the federal treasury. Those faces have changed, but the problems, they still exist. The one constant and consistent thing throughout history has been the face of the dollar, but the value has changed. Wealth inequality in America, that will always exist because the big banks in Wall Street, they're always gonna print money. They're always going to do what's right for the banks. And if they don't get it right, the bailouts will come. I think how am I help you? I'd like to cash this check here and then and I'd like to take you out for a steak dinner. <laughs> 2020 gave false hope to many of the retail investors. There was a lot of money pumped into the economy. GameStop took off AMC, money was made. Money is an illusion. And without the public's trust in money, there is no such thing as money. The value of money is derived from the trust of people. And without gold backing, money is just paper. Nothing more, nothing less. What led to the Great Depression? It was a lack of trust in monetary policy. FDR knew he had to do something with the bankers in Wall Street in order to regain public trust. Without public trust, money is worthless. And so what you're seeing right now, currently at the moment, you're seeing a Federal Reserve hell bent on returning price stability and maximum employment, even if it results into a recession. Recessions are often engineered, but that's something that's debatable. But if you look at the charts and you look at the data, recessions are engineered. And currently in the time period we're in right now, it's yet to come. Now, we, we can get through this thing, all right? We, we've got to stick together, though. We've got to have faith in each other. But my husband hasn't worked in over a year, and I need money. How am I going to live until the bank opens? i got doctor bills to pay. I need cash. I can't I keep my kids on faith. I've got to have... How much do you need? Hey! I got $2,000. Here's $2,000. This will tide us over to the bank reopens. All right, Tom, how much do you need? $242. Thompson, how much do you want? But it's your own money, Joe. Never heard. mind about that. How much do you want? Well, I can get along with 20 all right. All right, Miss Davis. Could I have $1,750? That's your heart. Of course you can have it. You got 50 cents. Seven. We're going to make it, George. Six. It'll never close us up today. Five, four, three, two. One bingo! We made it, Commodore Eustace. We made it. Look, look, we're still in business. We still got two bucks left.